just wanted to add to what we're going to be going through in class in terms of looking at different journals and references and how to dig into them. So one of the things that I've found really useful is that when I'm looking at primary literature and trying to unpack what's there is to try to have a structured and systematic approach to being able to do this. So what we've got here is basically, you know, um, sort of why I think it's important for uh, chronic, uh, chronicling your work as you go through this. If you worked in a laboratory, you can see that there's a lot of work that's been done in terms of keeping a laboratory notebook. But this is, um, this is something that I thought would be a really useful way to, for you to be able to dig into some of the work that you're putting together for your 495. So what we're doing in this case is that we're trying to, um, to uh, basically format and organize some of our ideas by setting up a table of contents, space for free form, keeping a site open for notes, page numbering, and making it easy to get to. Um, I like to have it in a composition book, hard copy. Um, the digital versions for me just don't seem to work very well. Uh, it could be because I'm not a digital native, but I just am not, it doesn't feel as real as when you have it, the page in front of you and physically writing it down. It's something about that motor skill that makes it meaningful to me. You can see if that works for you. Um, but then analyzing and capturing the ideas, basically I break it down into several different phases. Capturing, getting the main idea and their source. Uh, for a paper using the right page to kind of dig into it. Um, and then brainstorming. So not only are you capturing what they have, but also then being able to kind of think about what it is that is, um, you know, exciting and uh, or some things that you, you might want to sort of look up later. So um, your, I use the left page um, the, of the composition book. So the right page is the one where I'm keeping all of my, my notes here and I'm capturing everything and being really specific about it. And then on the left page is where I'm actually uh, adding things in and brainstorming as I go along. Um, I, I, this is totally freeform, so you can write whatever you want. It doesn't, you don't care how stupid it sounds or if it's, if it's just a diagram or something else. This is a very creative space to be able to work it into. So nothing gets crossed out here and you need to engage and do it. So. I do a rule of three of writing down at least three questions or three ideas out of every different topic and meeting or whatever it is that I'm at. And um, just to ensure that I'm actually getting engaged in the material. And so there's no such thing as a boring paper talker person. So, <laughs> so you can go into that part, part of it. And then what I do is that after I've gone through and I've brainstormed here, right, I've gone through and now I'm going to evaluate, well, what are the most important questions that I've gotten out of it, critiquing the ideas and the questions, and then what are the next steps that might be important for, uh, for this. And so as you're aggregating your ideas and getting them together for your, uh, for your capstone, you're sifting through this type of process here, and you can come up with some really creative types of, of, of actions that come out of it. So here's an example, basically, where I set up the left side and the right side of a paper here. So I've got this Kageyama review that, um, that I was going through, and I was looking at all of these different types of, of topics here. And things like, what is this? What is this? Like these really sort of content-specific uh, types of questions are important. And then how this matches with classifications of this, is this really true? Did I, um, I wasn't really sure if this is really a, a clear point that they had made, and I wanted to be able to see... Um, uh, what this um, what this works and how this fits in the other types of material, and then thinking about how it is that um, these different parts um, come together and how you can come up with new ideas from it. So your purpose is to develop a review. So you're not necessarily looking for trying to create and design like new experiments to to work on, but this approach is really useful for being able to help break down what it is that you're looking you're looking for in your in your topics and to ensure that you're actually getting on to the um, um, and, and getting at the heart of what they're after. So capture, create, evaluate, and plan. And so these are the different kinds of, um, of co uh, components that are part of it. And then if you have ideas, let's say that you hit your you know main idea and topic that you want to get into, you know, you're into like, oh, I'm really interested in, you know, the one person that we saw was doing work on retinal ganglion cells and, and uh, stem cell treatments. Well, she could have really focused on one element of it. So one part that's really got, you know, neurotrophic types of factors or something else that would have been really helpful with it. Then she can follow up on that idea and be able to kind of dig into it and see how things are, um, are uh, what the next papers are. So squeezing the most insight out of your different types of questions. Is it too specific? Um, and 
uh, and then literature searches that you can you can run to try to see if that's really useful. Um, and then evaluating and um, and planning. And so just keeping track of your papers. Uh, you can use a file. You can use a reference binder. These are different um, um, uh, uh, different ways to be able to to do do this. Zotero is a great resource that I've moved to um, as a way of being able to try to keep uh, keep on top uh, on top of things. But I thought this might be a useful type of approach in terms of trying to dig into your work that you're doing as you're um, looking at all of these different papers and getting into the primary literature of the topic of your interest.